between what's existing and what's new. Yeah. And the renderings are so lifelike in some cases, you might point out what exists now and what is, uh, let's say, an artist's rendering. Oh, well, that's a really good point. Thank you. So um, if you look at this, the left one is not out there today. If you were to go out there, if you look on the right um, photo, the one that's in the foreground is actually the existing building, the one that's on land. But the one that's out in the lake is the one that we will be building. Thank you very much, Council Member. It's going to take about three years to fully construct this. Exactly. Three years. Um, but that brings us in right at the end of 2021 when that first, first portion of the plant is operational. Exactly. Next slide, please. The North Plant Structures, um, in this exhibit you can see they are shown, highlighted in green. Uh, they're basically um, the, the, the um, well, I mean, as it says there on the screen, they're, they are the critical path for reaching those phase one milestones. Uh, it's where we do our, our um, flocculation sedimentation, we recycle the facilities. It's, it's, a, it, it's stuff that we can lock down now and get building, but it's also stuff that will continue to be used throughout the operations of the plant as a whole. And next one other One other term that for our viewing public or anyone who doesn't know, it's a term I learned about um, agitation of concrete. Can you explain what flo flocculation is, please? I'm more than happy to. I'm also happy to. Just a brief definition. <laughs> so basically, it's um, we put chemicals in the water. Yes. That, you, that so you have several particles in the water, in the raw water. So you put chemicals into the water. So the chemicals will bring all the small particles together, and and they become larger particles, and then they start. So, so it's a chemical way for us to filter the water yeah. to a large degree. Yeah. <clears throat> Next slide, equipment piping and other allowances. This is, this is where you see the, um, the very large uh, equipment purchases, some of the very large equipment purpose purchases. For those of you that have had the opportunity to go out, um, th this, is the, this is one of the raw water pipes that's going into place, and don't worry, when we get them all installed, they're also they're going to be um, cleaned and sterilized, and and um, before they're they're brought into service. But uh, I have a picture of me standing in one of them, um, so it's a um, part of the process. But this is how big the pipes are, and there's a pair of them that are coming from the intake pump, pump station um, to the the plant itself, and they are making great progress yes. um, every day, yeah. every day. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and then um, it is important to know that there are some indirect costs that are associated with this because if you just add up those three last three slides, they don't add up to the full amount of the RCA that's going to be coming before you. Um, and so um, the remainder that's not on the actual equipment and pipe and, and the pieces that we laid out before, this is where those indirect costs are part of that $230 million uh, that we'll be coming to council for. Next slide. And because this is one of the uh, in initiatives that across the board we are committed to as a department and we are committed to in this project is um, engaging and utilizing our local and particularly our MWBE firms. This is the, uh, the percentage and the amounts of work that will be committed to that community as part of this amendment that would be coming forward to council. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the status and I'm gonna hand this off to Ravi to give us an update on where we are today in construction. Sure. Thank you, Director. Uh, next slide, please. So to date, we have had three early work packages. Early work package one is site preparation uh, in the amount of $37.3 million. That project includes clearing and grubbing of the 90-acre site, also the stormwater ponds, and of course we have uh, installed the construction roads, trailers, and fence. And the second early work package was early work package 2A. That is the installation of filters and transfer pump stations. Uh, that was in the amount of $45.5 million. And that included concrete structures for vest filters and transfer pumping stations. Uh, early work, work package 4 in the amount of $57.9 million includes the raw water pipelines. Those are the two 108-inch uh, raw water pipelines, uh, 1.5 mile, uh, five miles each uh, that come from the lake to the plant. 
We are also doing the tunneling under the West Lake Houston Parkway under this particular early work package. Next slide, please. Uh, an overview of the EWP1, Early Work Package 1, site preparation work. Uh, this is uh, uh, going as per schedule, and it's on budget. We expect everything to be completed by spring of 2019. Next slide, please. This is Early Work Package 2A, some of construction uh, photographs here. Uh, we do have a picture of the concrete pour at nighttime, uh, anticipated completion of spring of 2020. Uh, this is uh, on schedule and on budget. And I do, before we go off this slide, um, you can see the significant structures that are being built with this. You can see the, and I'm just going to say the massive amount of concrete that's necessary to construct something like this. And I know that, that we'll have some conversations here in a minute on, on a batch plant. And we, there is a significant amount of concrete that's required uh, to, to build this plant. Cubic yards of concrete is required. Next slide, please. Uh, the early work package 4 included the raw water pipelines. Uh, we are currently installing the raw water pipelines. We are also tunneling under West Lake uh, Houston Parkway. Uh, the tunnel, uh, the depth of the tunnel is 50 feet. Uh, that is uh, going as per schedule. Uh, anticipated completion is uh, spring of 2020. That's also on budget. Next slide, please. So the overall MWB participation today, this is the design design side. Uh, the Houston Waterworks team, their MWB uh, participation is at 23.6 percentage. Their regional participation is at 3.2 percent. And uh, as far as the PATC uh, project advisor te technical consultant, their MWB is at 25.7 percent, and their regional is at 4.9 percent. Um, both are tracking well. Next slide, please. Uh, on the construction, the MWB, MWSBE participation, on EWP1, we had committed 80.4% to MWBE. Out of the 80.4, we have already paid 49.9. On EWP2A, we had committed 116 to MWBE. Uh, we have not received any billings as of yet. And on EWP4, we have committed 13.3% to MWSBE, and we have paid 2.6 out of the 13.3 today. Next slide, please. We have extensive community outreach on this particular project. Uh, our website is greaterhoustonwater.com. We also have a hotline where the residents can call in case they have some issues. We also have quarterly public meetings. Uh, our next upcoming public meeting is in January 2019. And uh, we also uh, hang uh, door uh, flyers whenever construction begins. Uh, on We have also had seven plus contractor outreach uh, events on this particular job today. And so when is our next public it, meeting? It's going to be January 2019, and uh, we are finalizing with the church for a date, and once the date is finalized, I will, I will send an update. Next slide, please. So this gets us to what we're uh, coming forward to council uh, in the next few weeks. Next slide, please. So just to keep track of where we've been, uh, all of the early work packages that have been approved as amendments uh, to the overall contract to date are listed at the top. What we'll bring, be bringing forward in November um, is amendment number seven, which includes early work package six, um, and it's gonna be for right at $230 million. And so that is what we will be um, bringing forward. Uh, we are working on the, the final negotiations for the guaranteed maximum price, and we do expect those to follow to council um, realistically early in, in 2019. And so with that, we are available for questions, and we have um, uh, representatives of all four water authorities present. Uh, if there are any questions for them, as well as any questions for us or for our, our design team. Thank you, Director, and uh, Ravi, thank you thank as well for, you. for your part in the presentation. I'd like to welcome uh, Vice Mayor Pro Tem Jerry Davis from District, from District B, and he is the first of our council members in the queue. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for the presentation. Sorry for my tardiness. Um, so quick question on slot, slot 11 for the early work package uh, equivalent to 230 million. Is there, a, and maybe I missed it, is there a breakdown of what's all, I see the photos, but is there a breakdown of the 230? 
So the breakdown, um, we didn't put it all in one table. We had it in one table. We thought the pictures helped. So the breakdown is actually the next three slides. So the intake pump station is the 69.9. The north plant structures is the 20.5. The piping. And then um, the, the, the third slide, which is slide 14, has the um, equipment piping and other allowances. And we actually broke that down on a table in that slide so okay, you can see 43. the components. Okay, so which gets me to on page 15, you have the 4.2 million for bonds. That that's what underwriting attorney, attorney fees and things like that. Yeah, those are performance bonds and payment bonds for this particular okay. early work package. Okay, and the fee of 10.7 for clarification. That's yeah, the fee of 10.7 million dollar goes to Houston Waterworks for the design builder fee of 8.5 percent. To the design builder, the Houston Waterworks team, that's their uh, fee on this particular early work package. 10 million, okay. Yeah. And so, and so, and then the professional services, who was in that, I'm sorry. So the uh, professional services also goes to Houston Waterworks team and their subconsultants. Uh, that is uh, 15.1 million, that is uh, divided into uh, since we increased the scope, we had to compensate them for, for that services. Would you please repeat their name? Houston Waterworks team. That's the joint venture between Jacobs and CDM, Smith. And, and they do have several subconsultants. So that particular item goes to that particular team, Houston Waterworks team and their subconsultants. OK. So if you could just slow down oh, just a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I know we're going to have some questions I'm hearing <clears throat> from the panel here. It may be helpful to give us the full-blown uh, breakout, uh, but let's pursue the questions. Uh, uh, I yeah, interrupted that, you. That was going to be, we, you know, I know you don't have it now, but when you can, a uh, breakdown of who's doing what. And, and, I'm, and I apologize, I'm not familiar with general conditions. That's... Yes, the general condition is the construction management of this particular early work package. Okay. Okay, so, all right. And the contingency is just, we don't, we don't know, but we're just going to have yeah, that, that is risk, case. Uh, it's based on a risk register. So if, uh, if the design builder has missed something in the design, uh, the contingency will well, come. Well, I'm, I'm hoping for 10.7 million they haven't missed anything. I mean, uh, no, no. The, I'm the, just saying. Uh, uh, Council Member, the, the bids are received at 60%. I'm just joking with yeah. you. I appreciate all the hard work, Rodney. Thank you. Thank you. Our next Council Member in the queue is Council Member Martin. Yeah, so, Council Member Davis, I'm with you on it. So, compare 18 to 26 because it's different. So, you have amendments 1 through 3, 84.3, and on page 18 you have 1, 2, but no 3. So doing the math, I'm assuming package three was for $1.5 million? There was no package three, sir. Package well, three. you're saying down here, package amendments number one through three at 84.3, and I, I can add one, and I can add two, and I'm assuming the difference between that is package three, because... Uh, 45.5 and 37.3 do not add up to 84.3. A council member, that's not the way it is. The amendment 1 to 3 are all design-related uh, amendments. So for the Houston Waterworks team to design the project, we have paid 84.3 through amendments 1 through 3. What, so, okay, where is 3? You don't have 3 anywhere here. What is 3? Early work package three, that was uh, duct bank, and that has been rolled into early work package four. So we delete so it. Add up, I add up two and one, I get 82.8 million, but yet you have on page 26, 84.3. So what is it? So, so uh, let me help here just a second, council member. And, and, so, it's like so, this, and it's like this for a lot of them. So early package work number four, 57.9, but you have it on here as 37.4 on page 26. Your page 18 doesn't correlate to page 26. So look, I'm more than happy to, to walk through this with you. So amendments one through three did not include any early work packages. So there's nothing on the map on page 18. So here, here's, here's what I would like. to that. I would like the total money was spent so far, sure. what the package is, who are the contractors, the subcontractors, how much did they get paid so that I can add it all up to 
the number that you're going to give me. I can do that. Okay. And send it to everybody on council. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, council member. Uh, I think yeah, I can there's, there's been some moves here that were intended to clarify, and I think it maybe worked against those purposes. So, But, if but, but I do want to say real quick, if you look now, there is there is a rounding difference. But if you if you continue on that table on page 26, amendment number four is early work package one, and you'll see 37.4, and that pertains to the 37.3. That's where we have a rounding disconnect between the two. Um, if you look at amendment number five, that's early work package number four, and that 57.9 matches the 57.9 on page. 18. And if you look at amendment number six, which is early work package 2A, the 45.5 matches the 45.5 so I'm, I'm on at, page 18. I'm looking at, let me finish up, I'm looking at 18, EWP, early work package 4, 57.9. Correct. Then I go to 26, 37.4. Uh, no. Um, no. Early, um, okay, that's amendment 4, my right. bad. Yeah. My bad. So that's 57. Can, we can get yeah, you back just in. Just give me the clarification. I want to know how much money was spent year to day and who are we spending it with. Yeah, we, yes, sir. I, yeah, I can do that. Would you, would you like to be put back in the queue or is that your. Uh... I'll get to some more. But... Okay, thank you. The next speaker is Councilmember Cisneros. Thank you, Chair. So uh, my question, you know, when I'm looking at the, the numbers of, of, uh, of the amount of money things are going to cost, um, this is for the, the total cost for the project. Is that correct? Or is this our Houston share? So this is, t uh, so the numbers that we're giving you is 100% of the cost and it will be okay. divided by that pie chart. So on page seven, so so these numbers aren't what, what we're paying. This is that we will pay 16% of those costs. That's correct. So when okay. we come to council with the action, um, it will have our share of the money. It will also have the contributed capital from the four partners that we have in this for portion of the contract as well. Okay, so um, and and, we're, and we see that you know that really the lion's share is being paid by most of these other partners. And um, and um, my question: most of the water does the water that you um, the, of cost being shared? Yes, ma'am. It does. Okay. And is this enough water for us on day? That's interesting. I, I, um, this is just one of our water sources. Do we? Is this um, adequate for you know for the, our future growth? And um, so, so yes. This this combined with the large production we have at the east plant, and the southeast plant, and the fact that we're our needs. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our next. Council member, Council member Davis, did you want to get back in? Or are you out? Yes, sir. Okay, you're you're up. Thank you. And, and again, I, I want to be clear. I, I'm not. I'm just looking for clarification. I'm Absolutely. not trying to figure out any sure. left or right type of okay thing. So uh, w when we're doing this, um, such a large amount of money, how are we doing the inspection? Are we doing it internally in dollars for the three, the three sectors? Who's doing the inspection on, on this? Yeah, I, I, I can answer that. Uh, so we have a robust uh, this. So the way it works is the tier one, the primary contract of this, part of is that the builder is actually responsible for the, the construction management and the construction inspection. So it is part of the team and then he's going to talk about how within that team it is structured and how it's set up. But it's not actually a separate city okay. inspection. It's actually part of the design build team. It is contractually in the design build team. Yeah, so thank you. So with that, uh, the actual contractor who is building a particular structure, they will perform the pl their own inspection. After that, the design builder will have their inspectors the Houston Water Works team will inspect it again right after that design builder will have their quality assurance team we as city we do have an oversight so okay. there are it's a layered system council member 
Okay, I'm just making sure with so many different entities participating, I just wanted to make sure who was, you know, because we've had some issues with concrete and things like yes, that at have. the airport, and we, I don't want to. So, so one of the things that our project is they have a um, outside auditing function reviewing the reviewing the the making sure that. being done and done. Can you expand a little on the laboratory, the types of testing? Is it a compression test or what do they do to actually it, test that? It depends on the activity, um, but, but all of the materials testing will be performed by independently licensed labs. That's helpful. So with the, the construction management, you have project management managers, is that what you were talking about, just doing the inspections? Yes, who will either work for uh, Houston Waterworks team or uh, will contract with the uh, project advisors team. And you will, you will have that breakdown with the request from Councilmember Martin to sure. us and yes. and if they've done any, I'm sorry, I'm saying, yeah. if they've done any inspections, you know, what have they gotten paid and yeah. so on and uh, so forth. I'll, I'll have an extensive breakdown. May hey, I offer? I think that it might be good for us yes, to um, have Houston Waterworks team in partnership with us. And circulate to the committee and our council member colleagues, uh, and we'll get that right Because we could you. spend an hour on that, and it would be worth it. Oh, okay. okay. I think there's a number of us who'd like to hear that. Council member Martin, you're back yep. in the queue. While we're on the inspection piece, so until I got into this, and that was called the multiplier. In the accounting field, when we give bids, if we bill somebody out at $100 an hour, that's our hours worked. $500 an hour, same thing, Tom's hours worked. But there's a term that I guess the engineering community uses that's called a multiplier. And I want to make sure that we have this on public record about the multiplier for the inspection piece because who we work with each and every day you know, when this project is said and done, a lot of people are going to pack up their travel bag and head home, and we're going to have our guys that we live and eat and breathe with every day, and I want to make sure that they're treated fairly. To me, what the multiplier is on the inspection piece, because I know the multiplier is three times the hourly rate for the other components of this job, and the multiplier for inspection is so I'm, I'm going to let Robbie answer that real quick, but, I, but before I do, I'm going to say um, we are committed. Um, Public Works is committed to making sure that our, our local and minority um, firms are treated fairly through this process. And I will attend every meeting I have to, and I will represent, and I will fight through this process. Thank you. Yeah. So the construction inspection multiplier, that's the multiplier that is being give them less multiplier, right? Uh, Until we reached an agreement on this. We started, when we started the negotiation, the multiplier was 2.28. Why do they get 2 point service? How much of a multiplier do we give uh, the the HWT team? 3.0 is on the Why don't we concept. give them 3.0 instead of 2.7? You devalue their services No, we do, we do not devalue their services, council members. Why they, did you give them 7 instead of 3? Give me seven. your rationale. Yeah, there so, is that industry well, standard or what? It, it is industry standard for construction inspection. Generally, it is about uh, uh, slightly lower than even even on a regular city job. Instead of a three, we pay 2.7 to construction inspection. The, some of the reasons are for a cons construction inspector, you do, do not have to be certified like a professional engineer. Other, other factors that come into play are in a professional services environment, you need technical IT support. In a cons construction inspection, you do not have IT support. Professional services, they need to house people in, in, a, in, in offices. Generally, in a construction inspection services, they are not housed in offices. So those are the factors that, are, that come into play in reducing it by 0.3, 3 versus 2.7. Those are the reasons. But the, the, the answer to your question, Council Member, is it's all a negotiation, and until we reach the end, right. it's a negotiation. There are different um, things that come into the discussion and out of the discussion, but at the end of the day, um, we are working with the Waterworks team to uh, make sure that the sub-consultants 
are given the same consideration as being subconsultants on in any city project. And so um, we were not at the end when some of the information uh, got outside the negotiations. Um, and we are now at the end, and we are being consistent with how we take, treat our subconsultants across the board on our other contracts. So just a quick follow-up. Briefly. Yes, so sir. make sure I understand this. So a 2.7 multiplier uh, for the inspection piece is consistent with the multiplier we use through every job in the city of Houston. There, there are small variations here and there, but in general, yes, sir, okay. that is consistent with how we treat okay. consultants throughout. And the negotiations take place between who? What two parties was this? So the negotiations takes place between the project management team, that is headed by me, and the Houston Waterworks team, uh, which is the design we can, So between we HWT can, and you? Yes. And not the inspectors? They're not a part of the negotiating? No, they are not part of the. I do not negotiate with the inspectors. I negotiate with. Get you back in the queue if you like, Councilmember. Okay, uh, we're going to go to staff from Councilmember Edwards' office. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm looking here at page 26, and as you noted earlier, uh, an amendment usually means something different in other contracts that we use. Could you walk me through uh, the differences between amendments one through three, which are not labeled as early work projects, and uh, four through six, which are? I heard you earlier when you said um, early work project three was rolled into early work project four. I'm wondering, was there a five that was rolled into another? If you could just walk me through these. So I'll start by saying that um, unfortunately we probably should have used A's and B's and C's for the early work packages because having numbers for the amendments and numbers for the early work packages has created unnecessary confusion. Um, but the first three amendments were directly related to design activities to get to a point that we could actually generate a construction work package. So an early work package really is a construction work package. Okay. And so the, the difference between the amendments one through three and four, five, and six is four, five, and six include both design and construction, where one, two, and three just include design. Thank you. Thank you. And Council Member Martin, you're back in the queue. Yeah, just a quick follow up. So what I'm looking for is exactly what uh, we just talked about, and that is we have six early work packages with dollar amounts, and on here you have one, two, and four. So I don't know what five, six, and all those. Well, this give is me, where it's me, unfortunate. Me, they I'll, were Just later, just yeah. give me the totals. Sure. One, 13.8 million. It went to Corolla for two million, HWT for seven, blah, blah, blah. Number two, early work package three, all the way through six, so that I total it, total it up and I have what we've been allocated and what we've spent year to date. Yes, and then also I'm assuming the bottom line is still 1.7 billion? Yes, sir. Got At it. this this point, uh, we're, we're still, we're waiting for the guaranteed maximum price to come in. Uh, yeah. We have nothing official okay. to, and, to and change that. But that, I'll, that'll be great. The, the one thing I will say up front for everybody in this room and everybody listening, not all the numbers will be in the early work packages. It won't be one, two, three, four, five, six. Some of them went away. Unfortunately, we named them before we actually had them fully scoped out. So there is no early work package three. Just doesn't exist. There is no early work at package five. So, um, Ravi, when we're putting this together, we should put early work package five deleted combined with early pet work package Six. Six. There wasn't any dollar spent for those early work packages, no. I'm assuming. Correct. No. The Perfect. early work package five, five was for equipment. Now we have rolled it into early work package six. So Perfect. I'll explain all that. In the, you'll explain. That'd be great, you are. <coughs> Thank you. I believe that that may be the last question from the Horseshoe this afternoon. We do have one member of the public who's here to speak, and that would be Eric Hansen. If you're here uh, wanting to speak to the body, come forward, please. We'd uh, like to thank our director and, and associate director here uh, for being with us today. And if you uh, have a question for the board or a statement, please, uh, for the record, mention your name and uh, who you represent and how we can help you today. Good afternoon. Uh, like the gentleman said, my name is Eric Hansen. I'm a member of the Board of Directors for the West Harris County Regional Water Authority. I'm also the West uh, Authority's representative to the Northeast Plant. 
and uh, watching the political commercials on TV and the debate last night, I don't want to let a hot microphone go to waste. And I uh, really wanted to sign up and, and let you guys know that the relationship that the authorities have with the uh, public works, with Ravi, with Raj, with Yvonne, with Director Haddock, uh, with Carollo and the PMT, uh, is a relationship that is working very well. And uh, I, I like to state that to city council and the mayor at every opportunity that I get. So that was, uh, that was my real reason for, for signing up that and to let uh, any of you that have questions directly of the authorities ask those questions. I, I do want to make one comment about the multiplier, though. Um, I'm in the consulting industry as well. I charge an hourly rate, and it's not a multiplied rate on its face value, but it really is a multiplied rate. And I, I learned this through work with the engineering community. When I bill somebody or when an accountant bills me or a lawyer bills me, my lawyer's time is not worth $400 an hour. They think it is. But it's really not. That $400 an hour includes their paralegal, it includes their office, their conference room, includes everything else. In the engineering and architecture community, you've got an engineer one, an engineer two, three, four, you've got a principal architect, a junior architect, and they all have different salaries and different rates. And what I've learned through this process over the years is that the multiplier allows the architect and engineering firms to say, here's what the base salary range is for a specific qualified individual, and we're gonna put a multiplier on them of 1.52, 2.53, so that we can cover our secretaries, our office overhead, our admin folks, and things like that. So Keep that's, the lights on. That's, that's the big difference. Thank I think, you, Mr. Hanson. There are at least, there's at least one question from the panel, so uh, stay put. This is uh, Vice Mayor Pro Tem Davis. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. Thank you, sir, for coming in. Um, this is what, your second or third time down here? I think it is, yes. Yeah, uh, you look familiar now. Um, are you satisfied with the progress of what's going on? I think there are a lot of things that can be improved. I think that we are working well as a team within the authorities, the city, and the PMT. Uh, we're going to have a rough ride ahead of us as the GMP is delivered and is evaluated and negotiated. But this is a project that is moving forward, and everyone is working together as best as they can to accomplish a common goal. Is there a way that maybe you could email your thoughts to our chair and he could disseminate between them committee members if if it's un if you're uncomfortable that's fine but if if not because we we love to work with you and understand what's going on I, I would be happy to do that uh, I've I know that councilmember Martin and councilmember Christie and I don't believe it was you sir but I know that uh, miss Edwards someone from her staff came out to our Monday morning meetings in the past and I thought that was productive to have a, be able to have that dialogue and let you guys see what's going on. I'd be glad to send some thoughts uh, directly to the chair. And, Thank you. And we'd, we'd be very grateful for that. Uh, another question coming from Councilmember Martin. Yes, thanks for coming down. And I know you can't speak for the other uh, four partners in this, but can you speak for them? Do you know how they feel about the project? Or are they tracking with you as to it's great? And if they're out there and they would like to my, make comments, uh, confidential comments to our chair, I would invite that as well, as Councilmember Davis talked about. There are several out there. I, I will not speak directly for them, but I'll, I'll share my thoughts of our recent meetings, and, and that is that the four water authorities in the city appear to be of a similar mindset in their approach to this project and the evaluation of both early work package six, which will be contract amendment seven that that was discussed earlier today as well as the approach to the guaranteed maximum price uh, evaluation and negotiations so i i don't have any reason to say that anyone feels anything other than we're working well together okay thank you and as uh, my last comment of the day and then i'm sure we're getting ready to close i'll say as as an accountant that has three engineer students People always ask me about why my kids went into engineering. 
I always told them that they were a heck of a lot smarter than I. Until I heard about this multiplier. Multiplier. Because I think that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. Because when we build people out, we build them out in different levels. And the top level may have $500 an hour. And the bottom level may have $50 an hour. And we estimate how much time it's going to take them and bill them out at that particular rate with no use of a multiplier. So as smart as you guys are, and I've always given you credit, that is an asinine way of figuring out a bid. Thank you. I can't disagree with you. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. We would love to hear from you confidentially or uh, for distribution to the council. I'd, I'd uh, take any comments that anyone would have in the chamber today and look forward to working with all of you. Thank you very much for your presentation and being with us. Uh, with nothing else to do, I would like to announce that our next uh, meeting of the TTI committee in November has been rescheduled because of the Thanksgiving holiday for uh, Monday, November the 26th. That will begin at 9 a.m. instead of our usual 10 a.m. start time. Uh, please be careful. And this meeting is adjourned. Thanks, Robbie. Thanks, Director. Access to the roof, if ever need be. Again, there are some of the codes of 2007 uh, NEC, and uh, City Center Electrical Code is also part of that. Article 690, uh, photovoltaic PV systems are where we base our rules from. Uh, and 705 interconnection, interconnected electrical power production sources, and, and these are some of the rules that we we provide. This stuff can get pretty technical, and it's you know probably not for you to get too deep into that, but your design professional and the City of Houston in inspections will look at these things and make sure your plans are designed with these uh, code rules in mind. Right, and so uh, in our City of Houston Electoral Code, we have a provision that the permits are requesting permits uh, required that you apply for permit. Uh, uh, anytime you do electrical work and, and, and some structural work. Again, electrical perfect gets to start off with an application uh, uh, with uh, plans, diagrams, computations, calculations, one line diagram and all, uh, everything that needs to be provided for the, uh, for the contract. Again, this, this stuff is generally handled by your solar provider and not necessarily the homeowner, uh, but it's good to be aware of what is required when that time comes. Again, plan submitted in two or more sets is what we are requesting a bill of official. And we ask that they be prepared by either a master electrician, uh, licensed with the state of Texas and registered with the city of Houston, or a professional engineer under the Engineering Practice Act. Again, here's on the bottom, this is what the plan will look like. It's, designed by an engineer, you'll see the uh, State of Texas Professional Engineer seal. His name will be on there. Uh, he'll sign that. We look for to make sure that that, that that is done. And his firm number. Now, I don't have a firm number on there, but uh, we make sure that, that they're up with their uh, their licenses and they are uh, uh, required or, or legally authorized to do the work for you. Uh, this is a, a typical license of a master electrician who's also permitted to uh, uh, 